In this lecture number 14, we are going to be talking about record and playback with Selenium IDE and how to use ChatGPT for page object model code generation. So in this lecture, we are essentially not going to write even a single line of code, but we are going to do everything automated fashion. So we are going to write the automated test using automated fashion with all these cutting edge technology that we have been exposed to with. So you can see that we have been using the Selenium web driver all these days, which was something that is very, very helpful because we use this Selenium C sharp code to write all these Selenium web driver code to perform the operation on the UI. But you could actually even perform these operation using the Selenium IDE itself. So you can use Selenium IDE to actually perform the record and playback within your Chrome, Firefox, and Edge browsers, which is this one. And then you can also generate the code and then you can also download the code. That is something that you can do as well. And we are gonna see how we can do everything using Selenium IDE. And then we can go a bit level further to use ChatGPT to generate the page object model code for us. So that is going to be awesome. So let's see how we can do all of these. So in order to download the Selenium IDE, you need to go to the read more page over here. And you can see that there is something called as Chrome download. So once you hit this Chrome download, it is going to take you to the App Store page of the Chrome, and then you can download it from here. So I have already downloaded the Selenium IDE within my browser, which is the Edge browser of Microsoft. And you can see that it is already installed within my Microsoft Edge. So now it is very, very easy. You can start using the Selenium IDE over here. You can see that there is the Selenium IDE logo, which is currently disabled. So I can use this over here and start performing the operation. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go and hit the Selenium IDE and you can see that the Selenium IDE pops in over here. So now I'm gonna create a new record test for this particular project. So once I hit this record a new test, it is gonna ask me for recording a new project. So let's say if I don't do that, you can also perform open an existing project, create a new project and close the Selenium IDE itself. So you have four options here. So I'm gonna go hit this record a new test in this new test project. And I'm gonna say EA project, something like this, and I'm gonna hit okay. And then it's going to ask me for the base URL. Remember all these days we have been using this eaapp.swami.com website. So I'm going to go ahead and put that all things over here. And then I'm going to start recording. You see that it's going to bring up this recording operation. So Selenium ID is currently recording. I'm going to go hit this login button. So it says recording clicks the login button. And then I'm going to enter the username there. So you see that recorder click. Uh, and then I'm going to say admin as the username and password is going to be password. So everything is being recorded by Selenium for us right now. I'm going to go hit this login. Even this is recorded. And that's all we did all these days so far, right? Now I'm going to go a level further to show you the page object model code for not only just the login operation, but we are going to go hit this employee list and then we are going to create a new person over here. So I'm going to say recorded user and salary is going to be yeah 100,000. And then the work duration is going to be 1,000. And he's going to be a senior guy. So I'm going to choose a drop down here. So this is the select operation that we discussed before. That is what is happening here. And then I'm going to use an email address as the recorded user at gmail.com and i'm gonna hit create button so you can see that we have did quite a lot of operation this time and i'm happy with this already so i'm gonna go ahead and stop this recording right now and we need to give a name of this test so basically this is going to be create user test that we have created so i'm gonna do that and i hit okay so now you can see that our recorder has really recorded so many different operations for us over here. It opened the website, which is this one, and it set the window size, and then it performed a click in the login, performed the click in the username. So you see that there is a command of click, and then there is a target of ID as username. So it is also setting the ID for us for the username, but you can also change it to name, CSS, class, XPath, and all these things are automatically coming for us over here. So even this Selenium ID is more intelligent enough to tell me what other locators that I can really use. So everything is coming up for us over here. And then it says type the username as admin, type the, uh, the password over here, and then click the button. So all these things we identified using, you remember, with the Chrome Dev tool. 
now everything is coming up for us over here. I didn't show you this one at the first instance because it is kind of making you more lazy to not do it, which I don't want to happen because we need to know what is happening under the hood, which Selenium IDE is doing for us. And we already know that right now. So that means all these things are more clear and evident for you, like how Selenium IDE is also doing for us behind the scene. Now everything is recorded and then let's see if I could able to run this test or not. So in order to run the test, I'm going to go ahead and run the current test and you see that it is also preparing the browser. Oh, let me log off this because there is no login button. See, you see that there is this login is happening and it's going to enter the username and password, clicking the login and it should click the employee list, create a new user. And you see that all of these are happening for us pretty much like how we selected and also the drop down will be selected and it also enters the email. There we go. And you see that there is a log as well for all the tests being passed and it's showing you the time frame it executed these tests. This is quite awesome. This is not something that we have discussed so far and it is already working for us. And guess what? This is not just it. You can actually generate the code from this operation that is happening. So you can just click this three dot over here and then you can see there is an export operation. So you can do ahead, uh, click the export over here and then you can export this whole code. You can also speed up or slow down the test execution from here itself. So there is this timer operation which will help you do it. So already it is in fast state, but you can slow down the test operation from here. So these things you can do it as well. And you can also create multiple different tests and run all of them using this run all test operation. So these are the many things that you can do. You can also save these tests and then you can run this later on, but I don't want to do it right now. Rather, I wanted to export the test. So I'm going to go ahead and export the test. And once I click this, you see that there is the C sharp dot n unit test framework. We are working on it at the moment. So I can use this C sharp dot n unit test, or I can also generate the C dot, or I can also use C sharp dot x unit or Java J unit, Mocha, Python, Ruby, there we go. That's quite a lot. And also you can include the origin tracing code comments, step descriptions and export use of Selenium grid. We have not discussed Selenium grid, which we'll be discussing later, but for now let's just stick with C sharp dot in it. So I'm going to go ahead and export this whole code and I'm going to hit this first test dot test and I'm going to save it over there. So I'm just going to basically overwrite. And now I'm going to open this test and I will show you how the test is going to look like. So it just opened for me in the uh, Visual Studio Code IDE and there is this whole code being generated. Do you see that we have this uh, whole namespaces? We have the test fixture for the NNA test. We have a setup and you see that it's also setting the Chrome driver for us over here. It's also setting a JavaScript driver just in case. And then it is setting a dictionary and then it is doing quite a lot of operation for us over here, like navigating to the browser and then clicking the login link, entering the username and password, and also doing a drop down selection. But this time it is actually selecting using the X path, rather the select option itself, like select element operation is not happening here, rather it's just using X path, which I don't really recommend to use X path in first place. But yeah, that is what is being used over here. And then you can see the rest of the operations are happening. But now what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna use chat GPT to help me write this whole code so that I can just use this for generating the page object model code. So we already have the login username and the password page and the button click, but I wanted to do from the employee list page. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy just these code that we have got, which is from the employee list all the way through to the creation of the user, uh, this button. And then I'm going to go ahead and close this Selenium IDE. I'm not gonna save this. And I'm gonna open ChatGPT. So I already have an account on ChatGPT and you can see that I have GPT-4 model as well. So now I'm just gonna say, create page object model code in Selenium c -sharp for these locator and set the class name as create employee. So that's it. That is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to say create page of the model code in Selenium C sharp for these locators and set the class name as 
create employee. And once I do that, you will see that ChatGPT is going to start creating it for us. So you see that it's creating a page uh, and it's also saying that this class will represent the page you are interacting with and defines the locators as a property and initializing the driver and then create a method for action. You see that it is doing all these things for us automatically. And as an added supplement, it has also added a web driver weight for us over here. So this is not something we have discussed so far, like waiting for an element, something like that, which we'll be discussing later in this course. But for now, just ignore this. But you will notice that the code that is written over here is pretty much aligned with all we have written so far all these days. You see that it is writing an employee link list and create new user, name input, salary input, duration work, grade dropdown, and email input and submit button. And it also has set all the identifier for us. Quite awesome, right? And also you see that it, is, it has written that public wide go to employee list. Uh, which is the action to click the employee list and then create a new employee but it has unfortunately entered all these details within this particular method itself uh, and then there we go it has did all this operation this is awesome and i can also tell now to chat gp that instead of passing all the input value in the create new employee method just pass them as a parameter so that now we can simplify this even further can you update the above code to get the input details as parameter for the method this one so now hopefully chat gpt knows what i'm talking about and then it is going to update our create employee method to accept the input detail as a parameter so yeah there we go now ChatGPT is going to start doing that for us. So oh, this is also another great way for us to use ChatGPT to perform these operation. And this is going to tremendously reduce the time that we babysit and do that. Hopefully these kind of steps are going to be integrated as a part of our intelligent IDEs that we are using all these days like Visual Studio or Writer IDE. And that is going to reduce the time that we have been spending but yeah it is already happening at the moment so now this page of that model code i can just use it within my test code and start using it to run the execution i'm not going to show you how to copy paste this code within my test code and do all these stuff you know already how to do those things but but you already got the idea of how it's going to be happening i'm going to copy this code and create it and get it ready for our next lecture while we're talking about the n unit test framework introduction but for now this is how you can use the selenium ide generate the code and use chat gpt or your own coding practices to perform the page object model creation and perform the operation you see that now the create new employee method also has got all the details being passed as a parameter rather creating everything as like a data input into the method itself like this so that is other way of you not using the hard-coded value hope you got the idea of how you can use the name ide with chat gpt as well catch you in the next one while we talk about the introduction of n unit test framework